Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of I Teach You Science. This is the five minutes or less series and today we're gonna go over how to graph. So here we go. There's a lot that goes into graphs, but today we're gonna be mostly focusing on how to do a line graph. Bar graphs are used in science sometimes as well and so are pie graphs to organize data, but mainly we're gonna be focusing on how do we plot a line graph here. So we need to make sure we have certain aspects of the graph in order to be fully complete. So the first one is a title. We'll get to how to write that in a second. We got our independent variable. This goes on the x-axis, which is the bottom of the graph. And the dependent variable is the y, which goes on the side of the graph. So the scale here is what the numbers are going up by on the bottom and the side. And our legend or key is useful for labeling certain lines. There's four types of graphing relationships that you should know, the basic ones. A direct relationship means as the x-axis is increasing, the y-axis is also increasing, so the line would look like this. You could also get a curved line, and it would mean the same thing. Inverse can also be called indirect, and this is as one variable increases, the other decreases, so it's going to look like this, or it can look like the curved version of it. Constant is when one variable increase, the other stays the same, so it's a flat line. And cyclic is some sort of repeating pattern, so you might have something like this. You could have something like this as well. So we got a basic data table on the left side. It says temperature and enzyme activity. The column on the left side is always your X, and the column on the right is generally always your Y. So we can label those on our graph here. X goes on the bottom, Y goes on the side. A great way to do a title is to just write the effect of whatever the x is, so in this case it's temperature, on whatever the y is, so in this case it's enzyme activity. That covers all your basis for a good title. Our x-axis label is always going to go on the bottom, so we're going to write temperature, and our unit is going to be degrees Fahrenheit, and then our y is going to go on the side, that's enzyme activity. Now we want to go up by an interval that can take up most of the graph if possible, so it seems that tens might be a good way to do this, but we're going to go up by fives because that's going to make us be able to take up more space here. So make sure your numbers are on the lines. So here's zero. We're going to go five on that line and we're going to go all the way across. Now you don't have to label them all, but I'm just doing it for this graph in particular. You could just stop at your highest number value, which was 60. And now on our y-axis, it looks like it might be nice to be able to go up by threes on this side because there's a lot of things that are multiples of threes. But we want to take up a lot of space, so we can go up by ones and make it even higher of a graph. So let's go by ones. Notice my numbers are in line with the lines themselves. All right, so now we're going to plot. So I'll plot in a different color so it's easier to see. We'll do red. So we're going to go, our first point is 0, 0. So 0 to the right and 0 up. So that's going to end up being right here. And our dot's going to be pretty big. We want to make big dots. So we can put a check mark here. Across 10, up 3. Across to 10, up 3. 1, 2, 3, put a dot check. So you're always doing across first, so across 20, and then up your Y. So 6. Check. 30, 11. Dot. Check. 40, 14. Dot. Check. 50, 17. Check. And then 60... 20. So there's our plots, and it's nice to have a straight edge ruler, so I'm going to use my little line tool here. You want to make sure your lines are as straight as possible. So we're going to connect the dot to each other dot. Make sure your line goes through the dots. And that would be our completed graph with all of what we need in terms of the title, the label on the Y, the label on the X, our scales, our dots are nice and big, and our lines are smoothly connected. All right, well, that's how you make a basic line graph in five minutes or less. I will see you on the next video. See ya.